So it doesn't matter what kind of conservative you are. Our party needs all of you. And we need you to go out and find more people who share our beliefs. Please stay involved. Be bold. Think. Challenge the mainstream media. Don't take their narrative as fact. Check out smart, independent, objective organizations that are growing all the time, like the Post Millennial or True North. There are other places to get information. Let's stop being the silent majority. Well, there's a clip of Andrew Scheer, the outgoing party leader, giving a shout out to independent media, in particular, our friends at Post Millennial and True North. I see a tiny bit of an omission there for Rebel News, but I can't blame the lad. We've certainly had our share of criticism of him over the years. Um, I just wish that he himself would have lived a little bit more by that creed. I found that he was far too deferential to the media party and to the CBC in particular, even after, shockingly, in the last election, the CBC literally sued the Conservative Party and no one less than Rosemary Barton, their chief political reporter, was a named plaintiff. How do you even talk to that reporter again after she sued you? Are you not worried it'll be used in evidence? I wish that Andrew Scheer's sudden love for independent media had been a staple of his strategy the whole time. Maybe he would be the prime minister now instead of just another backbencher. Well, one guy who caught the move and the mood squarely, and who in fact gives credit to independent media for Aaron O'Toole's success last night, is our friend Spencer Fernando, an independent columnist and commentator from Winnipeg, Manitoba. You can see all his stuff at spencerfernando.com. He joins us now, Vice Cap. Great to see you again. Did you stay up last night as late as I did to get their last results, or did you just call it quits at around midnight? No, no, I stayed up. I uh, wrote about it uh, when the final results came in. So, yeah, a little bit of a delay. Uh, it was kind of funny to see constantly, oh, 15 minutes away, 15 minutes away. Oh, just wait another 15. Oh, just another 15 minutes. But the, the results finally did come in. That's right. We were, we were, I think, on the air for almost eight hours straight. Uh, we were doing our share of tap dancing to fill the time. Can I read yeah. the title of your essay on it? Because I think you nailed it. So you can see this at SpencerFernando.com. And by the way, if you're not a supporter of Spencer, may I encourage you to sign up? Uh, you'll get his stuff emailed to you directly, so you don't even have to remember to surf on over there. Here's what Spencer wrote. He said, Aaron O'Toole's big win and strong showing by Leslin, sorry, by Lewis and Sloan shows conservatives decisively rejected the media elites and embraced independent mm -hmm. media. I think you're right on that. You put some evidence in your essay. What are some examples of how O'Toole and Lewis and Sloan used independent media, whereas McKay really relied on the mainstream media? Yeah, well, it's interesting. I think you could kind of see the trend beginning uh, even before the race really got going. When uh, the media really tried to push Jean Charest, I mean, you saw some articles in the establishment press, oh, Jean Charest really understands conservatives. And the response in social media was, people were saying, well, like, what are you talking about? Jean Charest's not really a conservative anymore in the way that most people in the party would see it. And so he dropped out. So that showed that the media already had a pretty bad grasp of what was going on. And then they started pushing Peter McKay. Oh, he was inevitable. He was the front runner the entire time. No one could beat him. Uh, he got endorsed by the Toronto Star. But if you look during the campaign, I mean, you saw Aaron O'Toole. Uh, he he reached out to independent media quite a lot. He would speak to uh, True North. Uh, I know Leslie Lewis and Derek Sloan did interviews uh, with you and with the Rebel. Um, and Peter McKay, I mean, he literally ran away from the Rebel, right? I mean, he ran away from, uh, you know, people trying to talk to him. And then it was really interesting at the end. He tried to cast it as kind of a move that was, uh, I guess, out of respect to his opponent, but when you had all four candidates who were going to do the uh, independent press, press gallery uh, debate, and then Lesson Lewis had to drop out of the last minute because of illness, and then McKay dropped out, and he, he kind of said, like, oh, it's just, just out of respect to Lesson Lewis. But I think a lot of people saw that as him kind of trying to torpedo the event, you know, whether that's fair or not. That's the perception a lot of people had. So he seemed like he really, he and his campaign really kind of bet on the idea that independent media didn't mean anything. It didn't really have any influence. Uh, and the traditional media was still where all the power was. And as, as we saw last night, uh, that bet did not work out too well for him. 
That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.